Hi everyone. In this section, we are going to talk about inferences for two populations mean standard deviations and not assumed equal and also unknown. Recall that the standardized version of x1 bar minus x2 bar is x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 divided by square root of sigma1 squared over n1 plus sigma2 squared over n2. Since sigma1 and sigma2 are unknown, both must be estimated using respective sample standard deviations such as s1 and s2. Then we can replace those sigma1 and sigma2 using s1 and s2. T equal x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 over square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2 which has a t distribution with degree of freedom is this you have to use this giant equation to find the degree of freedom only thing you have to do is plug the s1 value s2 value n1 value n2 value here s1 is the standard deviation of sample 1 n1 is the sample 1 size s2 is the standard deviation of sample 2 and n2 is the sample 2 size then the value sometimes that value can be integer or not if it is not an integer then you have to round it down to the nearest integer for an example if you have degree of freedom 5.3 then you have rounded down which means degree of freedom is 5 null and alternative hypothesis as we discussed earlier h0 or my null hypothesis is always mu1 minus uh, mu1 equal mu2 and alternative hypothesis we can write mu1 not equal mu2 mu1 greater than mu2 or mu1 less than mu2 we can use either one from this alternative hypothesis that based on our question now we are going to calculate the test statistic test statistic t equal x1 bar minus x2 bar divided by square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2 refer the t table with the degree of freedom as below you have to use this giant equation plug the values s1 s2 n1 and n2 round it down to the degree of freedom value now i'm going to use the critical value approach first state the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis then decide the significant level alpha come to the test statistic t using this equation find the critical value using this t table with degree of freedom as we discussed in previous slides with given significant level alpha if we have left tail test we have to find negative t alpha and we reject h naught if negative t alpha greater than t in this picture you can see negative t alpha is greater than t value so t is in the rejection region we reject h naught next one is if we have right tail test then we need to find t alpha and we reject h naught if t greater than t alpha as you can see in this picture t value is greater than t alpha value last one is if two tail if two tail test we need to find negative t alpha over 2 and t alpha over 2 we reject our h naught if t greater than t alpha over 2 o t less than negative t alpha over 2 as you can see in this picture if my t is less than negative t alpha over 2 and greater than t alpha over 2 we have to reject same thing we can do using a p value approach so i have mentioned the steps what we have what we 
should do if we are using p-value approach. First, same as the critical value approach, state the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, decide the significant level alpha, compute the test statistic using this equation. Next, find the p-value using t-table with calculated test statistic. So, same three cases we have in this uh, p-value approach. If we have left tail test, then we need to find the p-value. If we have right tail test, we need to find the p-value. It's right hand side. If we have two tail test, we have to find the p-value. And that p-value is the two times table value because it is two-sided. So altogether, we reject null hypothesis if my p-value is less than alpha. Alpha is the significant level. Okay, let's see an example. Several neurosurgeons wanted to determine whether a dynamic system reduced the operative time to a statistic system. Following table provide operative times in minutes for dynamic and static system. At 5% significance level, do the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean operative time is less with the dynamic system than with the static system? Assume both populations are normal distributed. So you can assume that both populations are normal distributed. So X1 is my dynamic groups, X2 is static group. Okay. Note that N1 equal to 14, X1 bar equal to 394.6, S1 equal to 84.7, X2 bar equal to 468.3, S2 equal 38.2 and N2 equal 6. So they have given all necessary information. Now let's try to solve this using critical value approach. Step 1. We need to define what is my mu1 and mu2. Mu1 is the population mean operative time of dynamic group. Mu2 is population mean operative time of static group. Null hypothesis mu1 equal mu2. Alternative hypothesis mu1 less than mu2. So now I'm going to define my significant level which is alpha equal to 0 0.05. Step 3 is calculate our test statistic using this equation. We know what is x1 bar, x2 bar, s1, n1, s2, and n2. So plug those values. And simplify at the end we have t equal negative 2.86 use this giant equation to find the degree of freedom all values all variable values are known so you can plug the values and at the end we have degree of freedom 17.82 as I mentioned before we have to round it down so we can pick degree of freedom is 17. Step 4. Find the critical value. Alpha is 0 0.05, degree of freedom is 17. So T 0 0.05 and 17, we can find the T table value. It is negative 1.74. Take the negative value of the table value since the problem is left tail. Step 5. So this is my uh, critical value, negative 1.74. And this is the calculated value. So you can see negative 2.86 is less than this critical value, one negative 1.74. So we have to reject H0. At 5% significant level, we have enough evidence to say that on average operative time for dynamic group is less than the static group. L uh, lastly, we need to discuss about confidence interval for population difference. 
100 percent 100 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval we can calculate using this uh, x1 bar minus x2 bar plus or minus t alpha divided by 2 square root of x1 squared over n1 plus x2 squared over n2 plug the values into this and we can find the uh, confidence interval find 90 percent confidence interval for mean time difference for dynamic and static group for above for above example so according to the above example is alpha is 0 0.1 so alpha divided by 2 it is 0 0.05 we can find the t value is 1.74 plug the values into this and we can find the lower bound and upper bound which means confidence interval Low bound is negative 121.5 and upper bound is negative 25.9. So we can conclude that 90% confidence interval for mean time difference for dynamic and static group is negative 121.5 to negative 25.9.